Hello, my name is Kelly Haxt, Technical Support Manager for SoftTouch Solutions Incorporated. Today we're going to work with our default pricing formula for molding items. Uh, I'm going to cover creating new defaults, uh, modifying existing defaults, and vendor specific formulas. To begin, let's take a look at one specific molding item. In the markup formula field, uh, you can see a complex sliding scale formula. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to change the markup formula to chop times three. I don't really recommend using this simple of a formula for all of your molding items. For a better understanding of the different markup formulas, uh, just take a look at the other pricing videos in our online training center. So now we've changed the formula to chop times three. However, simply changing the formula here isn't going to affect all of our molding items. We've really only changed the markup of this single molding record. What we really want to do here is to set this new formula as a new default formula. So while holding down the shift key on your keyboard, select the pricing options and defaults button. This will add our new formula to the existing formula list. You can also let go of the shift key now. You may see additional formulas listed here, but the only ones being used by the program are the ones marked as default. Our new one is listed at the bottom. Let's select our new formula as a default. We'll make it the default for wood, fillet, liner, and extender. I'm leaving the supplier field blank because I want this formula to apply to all of my suppliers. We also need to unmark the previous default for each of these groups since you can only have one instance of each group default in this screen. So we cannot have two default wood formulas and so on as this would cause confusion in the program as to which one to use. However, you can have multiple group entries if you have vendor specific formulas, but we'll take a look at that later. As we can see, the formula at the top is using all of the group defaults we want our new formula to use. So rather than unchecking the individual groups, we can simply remove it as a default altogether. Having this record here set as the default for all the groups that we selected, uh, this will ensure that all applicable items added with future vendor updates are going to use this formula. However, we still need to apply this formula to our existing items that fall into these selected groups. Select Apply to Group. To make sure that this formula applies to all records, regardless of what cost types they have, who the supplier is, or what category they are, just backspace out all of these fields. Verify that all the appropriate groups are checked, and click Apply. To modify an existing default formula, go to the Pricing Options and Default screen. Find your existing default that you want to modify and make the appropriate changes. Once you've made your changes, there isn't anything you need to do to make sure that new items will use this formula, but you do need to apply this to your existing items in these groups. So select Apply to Group. To make sure this formula applies to all records, regardless of the available cost type, supplier, or category, backspace out all three of these fields. Verify that all appropriate groups are checked and click the apply button. As I mentioned earlier, each group must be selected once as a default with no supplier. We can have multiple defaults for any of the groups as long as we're using a vendor specific formula. Let's take a look. As we can see, each group is represented only once without a supplier specified. This tells FrameReady that regardless of the supplier, use this formula for woods, fillets, uh, liners, and extenders. And use this formula for metals and plastics. These formulas are working good for our shop, but let's say one of our suppliers only prices by join, and they charge us an additional $5 a frame. 
We'll start off by creating a new record and simply pricing it as join times two. And I was using a $10 set price, so we'll add the additional $5 that the vendor is charging me, which will give me a $15 set price. We need to select default as well as the appropriate groups for this vendor. We also need to select that vendor from the supplier list. Now when we apply this, we need to make sure that not only the proper groups are selected, but the supplier as well. And that concludes this clip. I'd like to remind you that all the pricing formulas used in this video are for demonstration purposes only. I highly recommend you return to the online training center to view the basic and advanced molding pricing videos. Until next time, this has been Kelly at Soft Touch. Thanks for watching.